So I have a quick story to tell you about Sandy, who's the owner of this house right here. Um, we're doing the solar installation for him. He wasn't really all like super motivated to do solar right away. He kind of wanted solar, he was interested in it, but he had just done a big remodel on his house and he was kind of strapped for cash and he wasn't really thinking that he wanted to put the money out right now. But I actually explained to him that he had a lot of money to lose by not doing the solar. And after explaining the economics to him, he realized that he needed to do solar to actually help pay for the remodel because he spent like almost $200,000 remodeling the whole house. So with that being said, here are the couple of factors that I explained. One, the tax credit uh, is decreasing from 30% to 26% next year. Luckily, we were able to get Sandy's in before the end of the year, but if he had waited just uh, until after the tax credit changed, he would have lost about $900 just in that. Um, that's free $900. I mean, who doesn't want to lose that? And if you wait until 2021, it's dropping another 4%. So you'll lose basically another whatever that 4% of the total cost is uh, just by waiting. Um, there's really no point. The government's giving free money out right now. Take advantage of it. The other really important factor that not as many people know about or are talking about is how the net metering agreement works. Right now, we're in the second generation of net metering, which means that stg and &E has to buy back your power for retail cost. This is an artificially good situation that is not gonna last forever, and they're already talking about changing it next year, sometime in 2020, to the third generation, which means that they're not gonna buy the power back at retail cost. This is a huge reason why the payback period is between five and six years right now versus other states that's more like 10 years. It's because they're actually buying the power back at retail versus a wholesale rate. The other really important factor that's changing is the connection fee. sdg and &E charges each solar customer anywhere from $5 a month to you know $15 a month for using their line to essentially transmit the power back the opposite way. They're right now only charging you, like I said, it's about 10 bucks a month on average. They're gonna be starting like a $40 minimum charge here pretty soon. And if you do solar before then, you're probably gonna be protected. And uh, that's gonna obviously increase the payback period a lot if you have to add another $30 in expenditure each month for your power. So all in all, the summary of this is, if he had waited just 12 months between the energy bills he would have paid, you know, and the lost home increase of value, um, you know, not paying down equity versus just paying sdg and &E, the tax credit, um, avoiding net metering 3.0 and keeping the connection fee low, he was able to actually save about $9,000. And after he penciled out the, you know, the difference and he understood it for himself, he said, send me the contract, let's, let's do this right away, I gotta get it in before the end of the year. And that's why we're here, it's December 18th, and the system's gonna be up and running before the end of the new year.